Hi there, I got inspired by looking at this article by Julia Masalaska about UV export and I wanted to try something here. So what I've done is I'm going to close out this view on my browser here and I'm going to come over here to this model. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and select the model here. I'm actually going to select the body and I'm going to go under object and I'm going to ask dimension to generate UVs and then I'm going to go to object and I'm going to export those UVs to my desktop and they're going to end up here and I'll click open and I'll go ahead and export so while that's exporting what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over on this side of my monitor and I would usually have Photoshop on my second monitor but I wonder record this with my recording program and it only allows me to record one monitor at a time so I'm going to go over here to open and I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to find that body UV and this is showing me all the UV maps in here uh, let me bring up my layers panel I don't see it right here handy and I'll bring it off my second monitor so you can see it so it's showing me the different uh, areas where this is taking place and also let me turn on the texture uh, numbers here the effect, official name is texture grid and that's going to allow me to see those numbers and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save this file with that turned on okay let's go back over here to uh, dimension I'm going to hover over the body I'm going to come over to my arrow I'm going to come down to my base color and I'm going to go over here to my folder and I'm going to load up the body UV PSD. And when I do that, of course, since I turned on the layer over in Photoshop and saved it and then loaded it, I can see the uh, location numbers where I can put artwork. So I'm going to click on my model here. I'm going to hold down my number one key and I'm just going to move this around with my orbit tool and I notice primarily it's going from upper corner like we'll say from D1 here to F4 now I could just go into Photoshop uh, and add my artwork and then kinda guess when I reapply it so here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go over here in my dimension I'm gonna go back to my squeeze tube here I'm going to click on my body. I'm going to click on the drop down menu here. And I'm going to click on the uh, thumbnail here next to base color. And I'm going to click on the pencil. Now, before that, I'm going to go over to Photoshop and I'm going to close this file. I'm going to go over here back to dimension. I'm going to click on the pencil and I'm going to load this up into Photoshop. So now I have my texture numbering here I know where to put my uh, logo for my product it's going to be in this area right in here so what I'm going to do is this I'm going to come down here where I'm supposed to put my artwork I'm going to click on that layer and I'm going to go to file and I'm going to go to place embedded I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to bring in a logo here called Skeeter Beater and since I live in Minnesota, I thought it was pretty appropriate. It's hard for you to see it because the layer up here with the texture uh, numbering is obscuring it. Now, you could turn that off. And that's probably not a bad idea. But another thing I've done here is I'll click on this layer and unlock it. I'm going to go up into my area here. I'm going to lock the transparency. I don't want to paint on that. I don't want to move that but I do want to bring down the opacity possibly. So let's bring it down to let's say 30%. I'm going to take my magnifying glass. I'm going to zoom up on this area as best I can with my screen considerations here. And I'm going to come down here and place your artwork here. Now, you notice I brought in and placed my embedded logo here so it's above. I'm going to click on that. In fact, I'm going to uh, right click and make sure it is a smart object which it is already I'm going to hit my control or command T 
to bring up transform. I'm gonna kind of place it here and I'll scale it up. I'm gonna hold down my alder option key and scale it up from the center. And I'm gonna move it around and I'm gonna hit enter. And I'm going to accept that. Now here's the beautiful thing. Since I have the dimension file up, in fact, let me click to get rid of this. And I have Photoshop up at the same time. What I can do here is as I make changes over on the Photoshop file, I can save this and you'll instantly see it open up, or excuse me, update in Dimension. I like them apples. So here I dynamically can work with my selection tool on my Skeeter Beater logo, save it, updates, move it around, save it, updates. I'm going to go transform command or control T. I'm going to rotate this a little bit so I can straighten it out. I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to save it. So I can actually sit in Photoshop, make changes, and as I hit save, it's updating this body material back in dimension. So just for giggles and grins, let me go over here and uh, I'll place something else. Let me file, place embedded. I'm going to come over here and I can bring in a silhouette of my state I live in here. And I'll put it right there. I'll rotate it a little bit. And what do I got to do to see it? Well, I'm going to hit enter to turn off the transform and I'm going to hit what? I'm going to hit save. Boom. Now it looks kind of faded. I wonder why. Well, first of all, let me rotate my state again here. Let me hit enter. Let me do a save. I like that. I'm going to move it up a little bit. It looks like there's a white rectangle around it, so I can't come up too far, but that's pretty good. Let's do save. And let me move it over a little bit and save. Okay, that looks pretty good. Oh, it's because I've got this layer above here. This texture grid is turned on because I'm looking through it. See, it's at 31% opacity. So I'm going to turn that off. And then I'm going to what? I'm going to save. Beautiful. Look at that. Now I came out back over in Dimension. I held down my number one to orbit. Whoops, undo here. Don't know what that's doing, but. And I notice I've got this crud on here and I couldn't figure out how to get rid of that. And I was a little bit upset. Finally, I started poking around and I hid this layer up here in Photoshop called non-editable area, but it's not on. So why is this doing this? How about this outline one here? And let's save it. Oh, now I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know why it fixes it, but it does. So I'm not going to worry about it right now. So there you go. So what I'm saying is if you put Photoshop up on the second monitor, you can actually work with the actual UV file in Photoshop, add your graphics, update your graphics, move your graphics around, and dynamically as you save that it's going to update in Photoshop as I work with that. So I think that's pretty slick. Uh, maybe you already knew it. I didn't know I could do it dynamically. I knew I could open it up and make changes, but I didn't think about having it update as I did a save every time. So I hope this helps. Hope you have a great day. Thanks.